God, that you would help us, God. Lord, that you would help us. Lord, that you would help us. And like a still, small voice, I heard the Lord say, Hey, Dad. My bad. I was busy. I just got off a Zoom call where they were praying for your city, but I'm, I'm good. Literally. The only one that's good, so just let me have this floor. But for the people in the back, this is nothing that I haven't said before. I wrote it all down in a book most people don't read, but I spoke to Job from the middle of a storm. Let's talk about irony indeed. So I'm going to ask you the same question. Brace yourself like a man, and I'm going to question you, and you can answer me and tell me if you comprehend where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Or better yet, where were you? Uh, I was there in your mother's womb, knitting together your life, and it's my breath in your lungs, even when your breathing gets tight. Who shut up the sea behind the doors when it burst forth from its womb? Have you seen the gates of death or ever stood over a tomb? Ah, uh, have you journeyed or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have you seen the gates of darkness where the hearts of men grow weak? Have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place? or marked off the dimensions of the earth and set its bars and doors and gates. Can you bind the chains of Pleiades? Can you loosen Orion's belt? Can you bring forth constellations or make the mountain tips melt? What is the way to the abode of life? Can you take darkness to its home? You've lived so many years, what, 41? You should know. I'm glad you brought up pandemics because right now everyone's scared. For the Antonine Plague and the Justinian, guess what? I was there. Tuberculosis killed a billion. 200 million died from the measles. Smallpox and AIDS killed half a billion. That is, I'm talking about very real people. And you've lost all sports because your sports got shut down. Because you can't go to work and eat and hang around. And everyone, as you know, must taste death. I know we all know this is true. But that's the cost of sin. Wait a second. Did you ask me about a flu? See, this isn't the Spanish flu where 115 million died. You need to stop watching the media. Look how many people have survived because all the world wants is you to be bent on panic. Agendas to control the world order so you cannot hear my voice and it's distorted like it's underwater. You want my resume? You can't handle the truth. I've been the same yesterday, today, and forever. Just read Job 38 to 42. And at the end of, of the day, you want to justify yourself by condemning me. You want to discredit my justice. Then you think you're going to be free. So go adorn yourself with glory and splendor and clothe yourself in majesty. Unleash the fury of your infinite wisdom. This is what I would call tragedy. So just go. Leave me be. Go back to saving yourself. Wait, God, hold up. I, I was asking for someone else. Surely I spoke of things that I did not understand and my eyes have seen the Lord and I realize that I'm just a man, but I need real joy, real help, real hope, real peace. It's funny you should mention that because my son would like to speak. See, during my time on earth, I... I asked, who do you say that I am? Some called me the child, the Nazarene, the branch, the carpenter's son, the root of Jesse, the true vine, the bread of life, the rose of Sharon. I am the Christ, the son of God, the bridegroom and the lamb, the good shepherd, the great servant, the rock of ages, the I am. I'm a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap, rivers in a dry and thirsty land. King of kings and Lord of lords seated at my father's right hand. I'm the way, the truth, and the life closer than any of your brothers. I am your portion, your helper, your healer, your lover, your righteousness, your Passover. A stone that's been tried. I'm the captain of the armies of the Lord and Judah knows I'm the lion of the tribe. I'm the lily of the valley and the bright and morning star. I'm the one that could make a way out of no way right where you are. I was in the garden on that first day, and I also calmed Joshua's fears. I wrestled at the brook with Jacob, and I dried Jeremiah's tears. I walked by myself through that animal with Abram while he just slept on the side because I wanted him to know if humanity failed, I'd still die. I told the same thing to Isaiah for the people in the back. I made it plain. 
I said, I bore your suffering. Surely I took upon your pain. I was pierced for your transgressions and crushed for your iniquity. And the punishment that brought you peace was laid upon me. And this pandemic that you're going through is so painful, so real. But let me remind you, my son, by my stripes, you are healed. And this healing I provided is to you all today. But it is a healing that is deeper than even death, hell, and the grave because my blood was poured out and my body was broken so that the veil into my father's house would be torn wide open. And in one instant, humanity changed. The captive was set free. Death, where is your victory? And grave, where is your sting? I died out of love for you so that no one would be damned. The only man-made thing in heaven are the nails in my hand and in my feet and in my side. I know what it's like to gasp for my last breath. I'm not a God who has never tasted death. On a Roman cross, I was tortured. They wrapped my body in a grave and three days later I arose because my real name is Yeshua, the God who saves. And resurrection son, is like waking up from a bad dream, finding out that none of it was true. And somehow every negative thing that's happened will make the future sky more blue. And I know it's hard to think of a place with no sin and no worry and no pain where all of your tears are wiped away. No more guilt, no more shame, no more sickness, no disease, no loss of love again, no woes. This plan was set in motion on the day that I arose. So peace, I give to you now. Peace you must receive. Please.